Hi, this is George from Upfish, your marketing automation expert. Today I'm going to be walking you through my web visitor outreach automation. Uh, this is a really powerful automation. What it will do is have a look at companies checking out your website, enrich them for details to find out a bit more about the company, what industry they work in, what kind of revenues they have. It will look at the pages of your website that we're most interested in. And then it will find people who work for these companies who match your ICP, whether these people who work in sales, their founders, their C-levels, their CIOs or what have you. Once it's found those uh, people, it will find their email addresses. It will ask ChatGPT to construct an individual and highly personalized email to reach out to them. And then it will track it within a CRM. So the big advantage to this is it saves you a lot of time every day going through uh, the kind of dashboards that places like Leadfeeder have because this is all in an API and will get delivered to you in an Excel where you just need to approve or unapprove a particular message. And obviously, in terms of the outreach, these are people who already know about your company. They're already looking at your website and you know exactly what their interest is based on those web pages. So you have the ability to start a conversation already quite warm. There's no barriers to resistance and you can get the conversation going on your own terms. So the way the automation works is pretty straightforward. The first step is Airtable. It will look for basically campaigns you have running for web visitors. In this case, all that will do is it will return an API uh, key for Pipedrive to put into the next stage. Now, the reason I use Pipedrive is because Leadfeeder charge around about 150 euros a month for their service, whereas Pipedrive with their web visitor add-on comes to 60 euros a month significantly cheaper yet it is the exact same product the web add-on is made by lead feeder so by using that we can essentially save a lot of money and we still get to use the full access to the api so what happens is pipe drive api will search for all of the companies who have been looking at your particular website over the last week or two weeks or three weeks depending on what field you put in i recommend one week so it will take let's say those 20 companies and it will ask does this person um, you know, let, 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 let's find some more information about them. So you will then again ask lead feeder company B, Microsoft, they looked at a website, what else have they done on my website? And it would return a list of every web page they've looked at, the source they came in from, whether it was paid ads, organic, it was Google, it was Bing, and it will tell you how long they were on the site for, how often they bounced, for example. And then the next stage is obviously to track that. So first off, we have a Google sheet to ask, is this the first time they've been on the site? Now, the reason I put this in here is because a lot of companies will come to you once, bounce out, and never come back again. It's not worth reaching out to these people or potentially harming your email sender reputation by getting in touch with them. So instead, every time someone comes to the site, we add it to a Google Sheet. For example, here, you can see AP Muller from Mumbai, uh, logistics and supply chain. This is the websites they were looking at. And then it will just keep them there. And then if they come up again, then brilliant. If it's not the first time they've been on, then we update the database with the new websites that we're looking at. We check against our own CRM of cold leads. So where's our old CRM in Airtable? We have a cold, warm, hot CRM. The reason for this is because you might be running cold campaigns, for example. If these are cold campaigns, then these are people who have never heard of your company. They're just receiving emails. But it might be the case that even though they haven't responded to those emails, they then checked out your website. It might be the case that someone on LinkedIn has given a like or commented on one of your posts and as a warm lead, they've entered into this CRM. This is important because if it is just a random company you've never heard of before, great, we want to reach out to them. If they are a company who you've had a prior communication with, then you don't want to enroll them on a first touch kind of email. So imagine that we send a cold email to um, Microsoft they haven't responded to these emails, but then someone from Microsoft checks out our website a week later. It checks the CRM, it notices that, and it sends you a Slack message instead. It will say, hey, someone from Microsoft was checking out your website. They were previously enrolled in this cold campaign. We recommend you reach out to them manually to follow up and see what we need to do to get the needle moved in our conversations with them. If they are completely new, they're not in the CRM at all, what it will do is it will use Apollo to enrich that information. So it will say, all right, someone from Microsoft was on the, the website. We're interested only in talking to senior level people within the IT department, for example. So you add that into your campaign parameters and then Apollo.io will find those people. It'll return two or three people based on what you want. And once we have that, the next stage is to construct the email. So ChatGPT will say, okay, 
we know what particular page on our site they were looking at, we know what company they work for, and we know the job title of the person we want to contact. So we'll construct an email to say, hello, David, um, someone from your company was looking at our website, uh, specifically our page about NFTs for football clubs. Um, this is probably relevant to you because you work in the computer industry and as NFTs are uh, at the forefront of you know, new revenue techniques for blah, 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 blah. Essentially, the idea here is that when you're sending cold emails, if you send 500 identical ones, the email service provider will mark you as spam and you'll find it almost impossible to deliver new emails. If each email is individual, then each email will get delivered. And if each email is personalized to the person receiving it, most of them will be opened and actioned upon. So that is why we asked ChatGPT to construct these emails. Now, ChatGPT is not 100% uh, reliable when it comes to constructing narrative sometimes. So the next step is not to send it to email, but rather to update our CRM with the new contact information and to add that email copy to an Excel. So here, basically, every day, every morning, you can come in, you can check a company who's looked at your website, you can see what page they viewed, the contact name, and you can see the message that ChatGPT wrote. You can give it a quick skim through to make sure it makes sense. Uh, just change random words if you don't like it. Uh, get good media. Um, it doesn't matter. You just need to make sure that it all makes sense and everything looks good. And if it does look good, then here we have the reply.io sequence it's going to be added to. doesn't need to be changed. And the status. Uh, we can change it from unapproved to approved, for example. So that's originally all it takes, just to make four seconds to make sure the email looks good and then type in approved. What happens next is the next time the automation runs, it will look at that Google Sheet for basically any entry where the status is set to approved. In this case, there are two. It will then take that information. It will look in Airtable for that person's email, the first name in their company, and it will enroll them in a reply.io. Now, within reply.io, and indeed any email sending software, you can set up custom fields. So I set up a custom field called intro. And what it would do is it will take this particular text and put it as the intro. In this essence, it will then write the entire email based on this custom field. And then once it's been sent to reply to IO, it will update the Google Doc to essentially say done, as you can see here. And that means it won't get treated again. So once it's done, it's been sent. And as you can see here, it's a pretty simple automation, yet very powerful. In terms of use cases, anybody who's looking at your website, you can send highly personalized emails and highly unique so that your sender score remains high, your deliverability rates remain high, your open rates should be higher, and you can start conversations. The other big advantage here is that you won't be starting multiple conversations with the same people. If you've got lots of different salespeople or lots of different channels, because you have your central CRM in Airtable, it will always check to make sure, has this person been on a previous campaign before? And then send a Slack message to let you know if that's the case. Now, if you'd like something like this, you can download it as is. All you need to do is update the API keys in each of these particular products to get it working straight off the bat, and then construct your own email outreach sequence. Uh, if you need something more complex or even less complex, please just get in contact and I'll set up something custom for you. Thank you.